In this tutorial in Adobe Premiere Elements 2018, we're going to look at different kinds of keyframes you can apply when you're editing an audio clip. Adobe prefers to call this keyframe interpolation. I find that a little bit confusing, so I'm going to call it keyframe types. And so let's go to the beginning of this clip and we'll play a few seconds of it so you can get the context in which we'll be editing this video. Okay, there we have our, our drone shot where we're backing up and the music cycles every time we find something on the right that happens to be a tree or a light post. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some audio editing. So I'm going to click on audio clip number one. And then in the toolbar on the right, I'm going to click the adjustments button, which are my double levers. And that will get me to my audio adjustments. We're going to go to volume. I'll, I'll click on the right arrow. And I need to turn on my keyframe visuals, so I click on the little stopwatch to the left of the word fix. We have a separate tutorial on how to do simple, basic audio keyframe editing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink my display window a little bit. And then I'm going to enlarge my audio track below that by clicking on the right arrow. And here I'm going to see my track a little bit better. So what we're going to do is set some keyframes. I'm going to click on the uh, little stopwatch to the left of the word level. And that will get set a keyframe at that point in time. And we're going to move over a little bit and just set another one by clicking the diamond. And a third about the same distance over here. And we're going to move over a little bit so we see all three on our screen below. I can also widen, uh, enlarge my visual of this keyframe area. So what we're going to do is the level on all three is the same. I'm going to take the middle keyframe by moving the left and right arrows to navigate to it. And I'm going to lower the volume in that. And immediately I begin to see the visual of that in the screen below the preview of the video. So the default when you're working with keyframes in Premiere Elements is called linear. And that's the straight line. It sh shoots straight down and straight up. So if we listen to the difference, here's what we'll hear. Okay, now you notice oftentimes when I'm done previewing this, it clicks on the video track and my adjustment screen changes. If that happens to you, just click back on audio. You'll get back to where we were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to that middle keyframe again and right click on it. This tells me I have six other options on what that adjustment will look like. Six other kinds of keyframes. Really, it's only two kinds uh, and I'll explain that in a moment. If I click on Bezier, you notice I have a change at the bottom instantly. Okay, instead of a straight line, it's curved. And if I click on that ball, I find two tiny blue arrows. Now Bezier lets me manually adjust the shape of the graph and the rate of change on either side of the keyframe. You notice my symbol on the upper right is what I call a dumbbell symbol but I can take the right arrow and I can move it independent of the left. I can take the left arrow and move it independent of the right. So that's what your Bezier does. And if I go ahead, I'm going to go back and turn it to linear. And we'll go back and turn it to Bezier unchanged and play it. The difference is very, very subtle. You may or may not be able to hear it, but it's a little smoother when it gets to the bottom of the curve. Mm -hmm. 
This would be my preference in most cases with audio editing where I need to lower and raise the volume slowly. It's a nice feature. So let's go back to that same one. Right click. Now I have several other variations of Bezier. The second is called Auto Bezier. When I click on that, my icon changes to a blue ball. Now what's the difference? When I click on it over here, I'll see the difference. I have the same two arrows, but notice when I start to move one, the other compensates. So one adjusts for the other. There must be some kind of mathematics going on between this, but that's what happens when you do a Bezier that's an auto Bezier. I'm going to right click again and go back to linear. The third option I have is called continuous Bezier. And according to them, as you change the scale of the graph on one side of the keyframe, the shape on the other side changes to maintain a smooth transition. And I don't really see the difference between this and the other one, because when I move, I get the same kind of options. So I basically consider these two to be identical, although they are different options when you right click on it. Uh, so I have Bezier, Auto, and Continuous. I'm going to jump down to the last two here. We'll go back to Linear. And when I right click on there, choose Ease In. Notice what happens. Ease In is really a subset of Bezier, but it basically just causes this line, which was a straight line, to kind of mellow or smooth in a little slower, a little softer, with a little edge to it as I move toward the keyframe. That's what it does. Now, the minute I touch this and modify it in any way with the mouse, watch what happens. If I right click, it says, oh, you're a Bezier. So Ease In is really a subset of a Bezier. Only it adjusts what happens as I move toward the keyframe. Notice this other part is still a straight line. So I'll go back and make it uh, linear again. Then I'm going to do the other one, and you can guess what that will be. We'll do Ease Out, and Ease Out, it's straight to the keyframe, but it's a little more uh, edged, a little more softened as I come out of the keyframe, and then it becomes virtually a straight line. So it's really another subset. And again, if I, if I begin to move uh, either line here, it will adjust accordingly. So that's my Ease In and ease out functions on that particular kind of keyframe. I'll right click, go back to linear. There's one more that uh, you may be interested in. If I right click, I have another one that's called hold. Notice I have a very much changed icon in my adjustment screen. Also, hold is quite different when I look down below into the audio track. Hold says, Stay at this level until you reach the next keyframe or the end of the clip. And so it does hold it at that level. But notice the adjustment when you get done with the hold is very dramatic. Let me play that. it jumps. Now, there are times when you want to use a, a hold. In fact, I would use a double hold. I would move to the first keyframe in my section here, right click and call that a hold. And now here's what I have. I have a, a, a very sharp drop in it or a very sharp rise. And if I take my second hold and change the value of that all the way down, now I have muted the section 100% and it's not at an angle it is straight down so if I play this it basically cuts off the sound this would be be a great way to cut off an annoying noise and that resumes it and so you could do that with basically two hold keyframes one over here and the second one is at the place where you want the the silence to start and then the third keyframe is actually normal. So that's a couple ways to look at the variations of keyframes or the keyframe interpolation in Adobe language when you're working in Premiere Elements 2018.